Um, so I think we'll, uh, we'll just get started here. So thank you everyone for showing up to my talk. And the title of my talk is Out of Place, where I'll discuss my experience um, as a newbie in the quantum field, um, trying to scavenger for scavenger hunt for resources and trying to find my place in this field. And um, I guess I'll just give a little introduction about myself. So I'm a junior studying physics, math, and computer science at Duke University. I'm a junior. I, I just said that, <laughs> sorry. And I work for Professor Ken Brown at Duke on quantum control specifically. And I lead a group at Duke called Duke Undergraduate Quantum Information Society, also known as Duke. -ed. So right away, you might wonder, why am I here? You know, I'm an undergrad. I barely have any experience in this field. Why am I here among a list of amazing women leaders in business, industry, academia, in the quantum field? And that's the question I ask myself. So I want to give a few disclaimers. So the first disclaimer is that I'm not a genius child. <laughs> Trust me. I'm, I have a made some significant contributions to this field. So that's not what I'm, why I'm here. And I definitely wouldn't say that I'm an expert in this field as I, to be honest with you, I haven't even taken quantum mechanics for a major requirement. So by no means, I'm an expert in this field. And third of all, this talk is not about science. We're not going to talk about academic and the specifics of my research. So why am I here for? Well, I'm actually gonna tell you right away the objectives of my talk. When I was designing the talk, I thought that my I can group my audience into two groups. The audience who are just getting started, who are just like me, just getting started in this field, and my objective for you is to be able to walk away from this talk knowing how to proactively seek out resources and support. And, you know, one thing that I want to emphasize is that it's never too late or too early, meaning that if you're someone who are just uh, who are in mid career, you want to transition into this field, it's never too late. And if you're just a young student who are eager to get into this field, it's never too early. And the second group of audience is the people who are further along the career. And uh, I want you to help you to help us. I want you to, uh, um, us here referring to the girls who want to build a career in quantum, AKA the first, the first group of audience. So I want uh, to give you some tips of how to help us while we try to get into this field. And for the rest of the talk, I'm going to center on my experiences of being someone who wants to find a place in the quantum computing field. So starting off, I would like to say that I've definitely been one of the luckier girls growing up. I was born in Eastern China in a city close to Shanghai. And my family had a great influence on me. My grandpa at a young age was inspired by his grandpa to pursue science. On the picture on the right, you can see a picture of my grandpa when he went to MIT. And as a kid, I spent most of the time at my grandparents' house, who are both chemists, by the way. They really cultivated my curiosity for this, my surroundings. And one distinct memory that I can share with you is that I asked my grandpa, why does the steam on top of a bowl of noodles curls instead of going straight up? And he explained to me a lot about fluid dynamics and how that relates to aerospace engineering, how we design rocket ships and um, cars even. And that really fascinated me about the microscopic world that we see it around us every day. You know, a lot of natural phenomena that has inner workings um, from these microscopic science that we just take for granted every day. And I didn't learn about the term, the specific quantum physics, the term quantum physics, until I came across this book on the shelf when I was a middle schooler. Now, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even get through the first chapter of this book because I was really confused by the idea of wave particle duality, and I'm sure many of the scientists are also confused by that. <laughs> and uh, my first mathematical introduction to quantum mechanics was the summer year, uh, summer after my junior year, well, where I took a quantum mechanics course at Stanford, and. You can see a picture on the right where I had one of my all-time favorite equations hand out on my arm. <laughs> and it was recommended to me by one of my TAs who was then an MIT physics graduate to take the edX course um, series of courses, QM courses, which are offered at MIT. 
and I kind of find it hard to keep up with it while I was in high school because I don't have the proper training in math. And my high school teachers are not very, very much of a help when I have pro questions. But luckily, my high school has this research program where they pair motivated students with professors at nearby universities. So you get to work in their his or her lab. And through some persistent emailing, I landed in Professor Jer Jess Jesse Barisovsky's group at Case Western Reserve University. And I was able to get help for my quantum mechanics course, as well as, that, as ha having my first taste of research there. Um, uh oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess the first experience, that, that, this is my first experience out of, out of place. I mean, how much can a high school student do? Indeed, limited by my experience, much of what I did all day was just to follow the grad students around like a duckling and observe what they do and be curious about it. However, it was a very precious experience for me because it helped me learn what research is about and it helped me land in my next research position, which is um, working with Professor Micah Mikkelsen at the beginning of my freshman year at Duke. Again, after some persistent emailing <laughs> where I worked on manufacturing samples of quantum dots and some other experimental works. But it didn't take long for me to realize that I don't really want to do an experiment I wanted to know the inner workings behind it. So I want to do theory and that uh, I'm interested in, more interested in the idea of combining physics and computation. So that's where I suddenly hit the light bulb and it started exhaustively search the internet for resources and opportunities for quantum computing for undergraduates. And uh, I came across this, oh, sorry. This is a picture of Professor Michael Mikkelsen's group. And I came across this opportunity, which is Inside Quantum Technology Conference. And I was like, great, this is a conference for business people. It must not be so technical. And it, provide, it prob will probably provide me a great overview of this field. So I went to that conference and you know what? It turns out I was the only undergraduate there in a room full of scientists, industry leaders, investors, and business people. However, I did manage to make some meaningful connections and have some very nice conversations and very nice advice from people. One of the advice was that um, to work with Professor Ken Brown at Duke. And immediately after the conference, I reached out to Professor John Sung Kim and Professor Ken Brown at Duke. And they were luckily very quick to respond. And I started working with Professor Ken Brown my freshman year summer and have been working there since then. So the journey continues. Since then, I have attended a student conference, two stack summer schools organized by um, Professor Ken Brown. Uh, my first QIP ever, yay. Um, I have helped organize the IBM Summer Jam Hackathon, attended uh, attended Kiss uh, Global Summer School, and the list just goes on. So at this point, you might wonder that you, it, might, it might seem that I have it figured out, or at least I'm on the right track. So the natural question to ask is, have I found my place? Well, the answer is sort of. What I realized is that the feeling of out of place is inevitable when you constantly try to improve yourself by putting yourself outside of your comfort zone. So I have reconciled with the feeling of out of place. But what about others like me who are just getting started or who are just entering the field? Recognizing that there's many of us who might be overwhelmed by scavenging for resources or might be, uh, might be suffering due to the scarcity of resources. Uh, I started the Duke Undergraduate Quantum Information Society along with one of my friend, Nora, it's female founded. Um, and the goal is to link students to resources and help them make the first step. So what is the moral of the story? Throughout these experiences, there have been many times where I fell out of place, where I fell under the of the opportunity I was given, just like today's talk. And the feeling of out of place comes when you're not, you feel like you're not supposed to be there or when you're simply different from other people. And unfortunately, that's pretty true in a male predominated industry or field. It's easy for our young women to feel out of place on many occasions. And, uh, one piece of advice that I want to give my audience, the first group of audience who are just getting started, out of place to me means the spirit of proactively seeking out resources and pursuing your passion regardless of your surroundings and be able to step out of your comfort zone 
and connect with people who you aspire to be. And on the other hand, I'll have to admit that I was really fortunate to have any positive out of workplace experience uh, from supportive family to encouraging professors, from having professionals who are willing to talk to me at a conference full of professional, uh, from industry leaders. And one piece of advice that I want to give for my older audience, I'm sure all of you at some point of your career have had a mentor that has great influence on you, whether it was a middle school teacher or it was your boss at work who recognized your talent. And sometimes even just having a small talk with a student or someone who are just getting started in school could be really, really helpful and make a huge impact on their life. So at the end of this talk, I hope to challenge both audience who are just getting started and audience who are further along to reach out to someone who you would normally not have the opportunity to connect with during the summit. Thank you so much. Catherine, thank you so much. That was awesome. And Thank you. You know, we all feel out of place at times. It's not just you. I think it's a natural feeling. And you, we even talked about this a little bit yesterday with kind of the pretender syndrome, like I'm pretending or do I really have the skill? And so I think this was a great talk. And I think, you know, I'm in sales, so I always put everything in sales terms. But what's the worst thing that can happen? You go up to someone and they don't want to talk to you. So you try someone else. And I think, you know, one of the things that I always try to tell myself is we all got to try. And you've tried and you put yourself out there and you succeeded. And that's just awesome. And I would say that's probably one of the best skills that any of us could have is the ability to try and, you know, understand I'm not a rocket scientist, but I want to talk to one and, and connect. And so, you know, I just congratulate you. I think that, you know, your talk is amazing. I think that you put yourself out and went to all these events is amazing. And I know I can see everybody in the chat is saying, how can we support you? Um, and, and just, you know, want, want you to know that we all feel the same way and we're all in this with you. Thank so, you so much. Um, please just keep on trying and understand that this is a group that will support you and uh, help you in whatever your next steps are. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk here. And I'm really, I really ap appreciate for all the audience who are willing to hear me out and give me the opportunities to let me say what I have to say.